Welcome back to Winnie Recap. Today I'm going to explain a movie called What the Peepers Saw, which came out in 1972. This is a thriller horror movie. The movie has an audience score of 5.8 out of 10 on IMDb. The movie is about Marcus, a 12-year-old boy whose mother had recently died, leaving it up to his wealthy father, Paul, to look after him. Marcus takes a sexual interest in his new stepmother, Elise. She notices his abnormal behavior and investigates. Elise is shocked by her findings and becomes increasingly disturbed and wonders if Marcus is to blame for his mother's death. But before we begin, beware of spoilers, watch out and take care. And I hope you enjoy the video. The movie opens with a woman named Sarah. She goes to the bathroom for a bath. She takes her towel off and gets in the bathtub. Suddenly she gets electrocuted and dies in the bathtub and the movie skips to one year later. Now we meet one of the main characters of the movie, Elise. Elise was at her husband's house, Paul. Elise was Paul's second wife. Turns out Sarah, the woman who died in the opening, was the first wife of Paul. Paul was a businessman, so he was not at home due to some business work. He left Elise home alone to take care of his 12-year-old son, Marcus. Elise was Marcus's stepmother, so it was also her right to take care of him. She asks him why he is not at school. He tells her that he got out of school early because chicken pox has spread in the school. Elise believes him, but still has doubts. She was a bit astonished by Marcus because he did not seem like or talk like a 12-year-old kid, but he talked like he was an adult. Next morning, Elise gets a call from Paul. He tells her that he wants to talk with Marcus. Marcus was in the bath, so Elise took the phone to him in the bathroom. She hands Marcus the phone, and he talks with his father, Paul. After Marcus is done talking to Paul, Elise takes the phone and starts talking with Paul. While she's talking on the phone, Marcus comes up behind her and starts touching her sexually from behind. He touches her arms first, then touches her breast, which provokes her. Elise gets surprised by Marcus's heinous act and gets mad at him, but she does not say anything to him and leaves the bathroom while giving him a fierce stare. As time passes by, we find out that Marcus is lonely and has no friends, and he's also a spoiled brat because he belongs to a wealthy family where no one pays attention to him because his mother is dead and his rich dad is mostly busy with work. Elise takes care of Marcus without a question, but the horny little mischievous pimp Marcus sees his stepmother with dirty and lustful intentions. Few days later, Paul arrives in his private jet. Marcus and Elise go to the airport to pick Paul up. On their way back home, Elise drives the car with Paul sitting next to her and Marcus sitting in the back. While Elise drives, Paul starts to slowly touch her intimately. Elise gets distracted and almost gets in an accident with a truck in front of them, but she manages to take hold of the steering wheel and saves them from a serious accident. At home, Paul and Elise make love while Marcus plays in the yard with their dog. That evening, all three of them went to the restaurant for dinner. At the restaurant, Paul asks Elise if she took some money out of his wallet. She tells him that she did not. It was Marcus who took the money to pay the taxi. Upon hearing this, Marcus tells Elise that he did not take the money. Elise tells Marcus that he himself said he had taken all of his dad's money out of the wallet. Marcus says he has no clue as to when he said that. In the end, the blame game gets the end on Elise, making her seem like the guilty one. When they get home, Elise goes through Marcus's room to find the missing money. She does not find any money. Instead, she finds a letter which is torn into pieces. One day, Marcus and Paul go swimming together in their backyard, where Marcus tells Paul that Elise did not take care of him and does not pay attention to him at all. He tells Paul that she does not like him either. Elise also is there by the pool secretly listening to their conversation. So Paul does not pay attention to Marcus's words because he knows Marcus is just a little kid and little kids say all sorts of meaningless things all the time. Marcus also tells Paul that Elise searched his room too. In the house while cuddling, Paul asks Elise if she hates Marcus or went through his things in his room, but she does not tell him anything. The next day, Elise goes to Marcus's boarding school and there she meets the principal of the school to talk about Marcus. She asks the principal about Marcus's behavior and the school's holidays. The principal gets shocked and tells her that the school is on no holidays and the school is open and running. She finds out that Marcus's school is not on holidays, but Marcus lied because they kicked Marcus out of the school. The principal tells Elise that they even sent a letter to Marcus's home mentioning that he had been expelled from the school, 
but little did they know that Marcus tore the letter into pieces. As it turns out, it was the same torn letter that Elise found hidden in his room. The principal tells Elise that the reason they expelled Marcus from the school was because he used to peep into the neighboring homes around the school and he would watch people get intimate. The principal also tells her that Marcus also kills the cats that roam around the school. Due to these activities, Marcus got expelled from the school. The next day, Elise goes to a party with Paul. At the party, she meets a woman named Sophie. Sophie tells Elise that she knows Paul because Paul was the husband of her late friend Sarah, who died while she was in the bathtub. Elise connects the dot and now thinks that Marcus was behind the death of her mother, Sarah. She tries to explain to Paul about this and tells him about Marcus's recent school activities. She tries to warn Paul, but he does not believe her. In fact, they both have a heated argument and get into a fight because Marcus is Paul's own blood, and they both have been together since Marcus was born. Whereas Paul has only been with Elise for almost a year since his first wife passed away. At night, Elise goes to the upper store to look for something. There she finds out that there is a small hole on the floor underneath the carpet, through which she could see her bedroom. This instantly reminds her of Marcus and she thinks that Marcus has been secretly watching them too while she and Paul make love. Elise goes straight to Marcus's room and confronts him. She directly asks him why he watches them from the hole above their room. The little creep tells her that he enjoys it. Elise asks him if he watched Sarah like this too. He tells her that he did, but he did not enjoy watching Sarah because she was not hot like you. Elise then asks her if she's responsible for the death of Sarah. He says Sarah died of a heart attack. Elise tells him that he's lying because Sarah died of electrocution. Marcus asks her why he should tell her everything. What's in it for him? Elise tells him that she will give him money if he tells her. He refuses and tells her that he does not want money, but he wants her. Elise then slowly takes off all her clothes, and Marcus slowly starts spilling the beans. He tells Elise that Sarah had a heart condition, and no one knew about it. He did not even tell Paul about this. He tells her that he found this out by a letter Sarah got from a doctor. Elise thinks that Marcus is lying and does not believe him at all, and leaves his room furiously. Now Elise shows Paul the hole about their room, but surprisingly the hole is now vanished. She tells Paul that Marcus watches them through the hole. Paul still does not believe her, but starts to wonder that Elise might be going completely crazy. But Elise still does not give up. She starts digging on Sarah's death and finds out that indeed it was Marcus who killed her. Marcus had placed a faulty heater in Sarah's bathtub which electrocuted her and killed her. Elise wanted to know more from Marcus, so she asked him why he killed Sarah. He tells Elise that he did not like Sarah one bit, but he also killed her because he enjoys torturing people and it's now her turn to die. Elise gets mentally disturbed upon hearing Marcus's wicked statement, and now she has no clue what to do about it, because no one believes her. Paul now also believes that Elise has gone mentally insane. Afterwards, Elise's mental condition gets so worse that she gets hospitalized in a mental health facility. Few months later, when Elise recovers from her fragile mental condition, she is released from the mental hospital. They all go to the park for some fresh air. Paul and Elise walk around and talk to each other while Marcus plays around with his dog. Few minutes later, Elise meets Marcus and they both start to chat. Even after months, they both still start talking about Sarah's death. Marcus reassures Elise that he will not kill her now because he has developed feelings for her and now he is starting to like her. Elise starts flirting with him too to goad him into her trap. She tells him that they both can kill Paul and run away together somewhere far away from everyone they know. She kisses him to fool him into thinking that she's actually falling for him too. Meanwhile on the road, Elise sees a fast car approaching them. She picks up a toy that belongs to Marcus's dog and throws it on the road. His dog runs after the toy to catch it on the road where a fast car is speeding towards them. Marcus sees the car and runs after the dog to save him but instead of the dog, the car hits Marcus and the accident kills him on the spot. Elise sees Marcus's dead body and starts smiling without any remorse. She knew that her plan worked, and now she's truly free and the movie ends here. To watch more explanations of these kind of movies, don't forget to click on the video on your screen, and also don't forget to let me know how you feel about today's video in the comments down below. Kindly like the video and subscribe to my channel, and press the bell icon so you don't miss any new videos. And at last I'm going to say, stay safe, stay well, and thank you so much for watching.